CNBC.com, my friends. Port strike could reignite inflation with larger economic impact dependent on how long it takes. I got to tell you, my friends, we're looking at shortages. This massive walk walk off is going to result in a crisis for Christmas and Thanksgiving. This is the apocalypse for Democrats right now. You need the unions. Unions tend to go Democrat. And right now, 30 days out from the election with early voting happening right now, there is a strike. Prices are going to skyrocket. And these people early voting. They're going to walk in and say, I don't know what's going on, man. Just give me Trump. Trump will solve the problem. This is going to be big. Before we get started, let me give a shout out to our new song, Coming Home, featuring Phil Labonte, Pete Parada. We got Carter Banks. The song is about the decay and degradation of our cities, their collapse. And I hope this song's message resonates with you guys. And I hope you like the song. It's rock. People tell me, Tim, rock songs ain't going to make it anymore. You got to make weird synth pop stuff. And I'm like, ah, we make the music we like. And if you like it, Go on iTunes, buy the song on iTunes so we can send a message and let them know they can't keep us out. They can't gatekeep and deny us. We are going to keep making art. If we if everybody who watched this video bought Coming Home on iTunes, we'd be hot 100, number one. And they'd be asking themselves, how is it that a song that is political in nature, not overt, but political in nature about the decay of our cities is the top song right now on the charts? I got to be honest, I don't think we'll ever get to number one, but you know. Wouldn't it be nice if they had to write a story and said, song about our cities in ruin and decay reaches number one. Send that message home right before an election. I'd appreciate it. It's my song. Of course, I want to promote it, but I do appreciate you guys uh, and your support. Here we go from the Daily Mail. Walmart and Ikea and Home Depot are among big retailers that will be most affected by strikes that are crippling ports on the East Coast. Dock workers who have shut down 36 ports from Maine to Texas will cost the U.S. economy billions of dollars and cause shortages of goods and price rises within days, experts warn. Retailers account for about half of all container shipping volume. Many of the big players rushed in Halloween and Christmas merchandise early to avoid any strike related disruptions, incurring extra costs to ship and store those goods. But shortages are still expected. From bananas and other fresh produce in days to beers, wines, and spirits, and also toys and holiday products if it lasts longer. Retail behemoth Walmart is the biggest importer through the effect import through the affected ports, typically bringing in up to 48,000 containers a year. Each can hold up to 28 tons, according to UPS. Look at this, bananas! My friends, every night I make a protein shake with some coconut milk. And the difference between coconut water and milk is they, in the milk, they mix the coconut meat into it and blend it up, and it is very healthy. It's got those healthy fats. Yo, how am I going to get coconuts? I know we got coconuts in Florida, a lot of them, but they're going to get expensive because we import a lot, especially from the Caribbean. Ikea is the second biggest with 42,900 containers. Bob's Discount Furniture, Dollar General, Amazon Folgers, outside retailers, Big brands hit are uh, uh, Continental Tire, Hyundai, General Motors, Goodyear, Michelin, Heineken, and Pepsi. You're not going to get your Heinekens? Yo, this is wild. Okay. what Stocks making the biggest moves today. Okay, let, let, me, let, me, let me pull this one up. Are they moving down? I wonder. Oh, they locked me out. They, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if with this strike, stocks are going to start falling. Manufacturers of everything from trucks to toys to artificial Christmas trees face obstacles now that the International Long Term Association has called a stoppage at major eastern container and cargo port ports. From a macro perspective, the impact will depend on duration. Joe Biden, under powers granted by the Taft-Hartley Act, could step in and order an 80-day cooling off period that would at least temporary, temporarily halt the stoppage. Oh, do it, bro! Could you imagine if Biden goes in and says to the unions, you aren't allowed to strike right now? Yo, that's going to make every single one of these union guys vote Donald Trump with a smile on their face, rocking a hard place. But you know what? If he does not do this and the shortages inflame in the, in the next couple of weeks, gas prices go up, goods at stores are going up. It's already hard enough on the American people. And they want to pretend the economy is better than ever. It's a lie. You just go and ask people and they'll tell you what's up. They say, Though there's little indication Biden will do this, that will leave hopes in the hands of negotiators for the union and the U.S. Maritime Alliance that the strike won't drag on and cause greater hardship for a U.S. economy heading into the critical holiday shipping season. Labor action port workers along the east and Gulf Coast of the United States will provide a modest hit to GDP, said RSM's chief economist, 
Joseph Bruce, uh, Brusulas, can't pronounce that, sorry, who put the weekly impact at a bit more than 0.1 percentage points across uh, uh, of gross domestic product and 4.3 billion in lost imports and exports. Given the American economy is on a 3% growth path, at this time, we do not expect the strike to derail the trajectory of the domestic economy or present a risk to an early and unnecessary end to the current economic expansion, he added. Indeed, the 29 trillion U.S. economy has dodged multiple landmines and has been in growth mode for the past two years. The Atlanta Federal Reserve is tracking third quarter growth of 2.5 percent, boosted by an acceleration in net exports. A prolonged work stoppage, though, could threaten that. Some of the main industries facing challenges include coal, energy and agricultural products. One rule of thumb is that for each strike day, it takes nearly a week to get ports operating at normal levels. The cost of the strike would escalate over time as backlogs of exports and imports grow. Perishable products like imported fresh fruit might be the first to come in short supply. If the strike extends beyond a few days, shortages of certain production inputs could eventually slow production and raise prices for manufactured goods like autos. I got to tell you guys, man, the climate change agenda begets this. They don't want us shipping bananas from the from the Caribbean to, to the United States. They say, just don't eat bananas. You don't need them. You got you got where do you think the bananas come from? Right. We got what, Guatemala, banana country, banana republics. They're shipping them in. And the Democrat argument is that this transport, this energy use is burning coal and fossil fuels and putting carbon in the atmosphere. You think the dock strike is bad? Wait until they start implementing restrictions on fuel use for shipping goods. Now, I'm going to agree a little bit. Let me tell you something. I can tell you about skateboards. Skateboarding has a problem. They they get lumber in North America, send the wood to China. China makes the skateboards. They send them back. We don't do that. BooniesHQ.com. We make skateboards. It's American, North American rock maple made by people. I believe it's rock maple. That's what they use. Made by an American company right here in America. Why? Americans deserve our jobs. We want to work with Americans and build up American jobs. More importantly, look, it is insane that we'll take wood from America to China and then back to the U.S. Why? It's because they sell. They use Chinese slave labor. They get paid a dollar an hour, some other pennies in the dollar, some garbage, so they can do cheap labor and sell cheap products. I won't stand for that. But understand what this means. They're going to cut off the use. Of, that's why I, say I agree a little bit. But the Democrat climate change agenda, which I got to tell you, at the, on the debate last night, they asked J.D. Vance. Trump said that it was a hoax. And he's saying, yeah, they don't put their money where their mouth is. They're claiming all of these things about climate change and buying beachfront property and flying in private jets. So I don't disagree, right? But I think it's insane that at a time when our economy is hurt and we need to start bringing back in American jobs, and J.D. Vance was talking about, he says, this will solve a lot of that problem. A lot of those problems. What you will get under the Democrats' plan is they're going to bring they're going to send jobs overseas. Then they're going to punish companies who use fuel to transfer these things. And it's going to destroy American jobs and crank up prices. You know why? Higher prices mean slower economy. Slower economy means less climate change. Oh, because we're not we're not generating as much carbon. I think they're hypocrites. I think there are ways to solve this. I think there's quote unquote green energy like nuclear power that they're not talking about. But we look at this dock strike right now, this port strike right during the election. I don't know how the Democrats are going to navigate this one. Look, I got to tell you, when you got hurricane disaster, war in Eastern Europe, expanding war in the Middle East, a port strike and a weakened economy all at the same time. I look at that story where Kamala Harris skipped the Al Smith dinner. And they say the last person to do that was Mon who, who skipped it was Mondale. Remember Mondale? He won one state. Yeah. Now, I don't think Donald Trump will get a 49 state landslide. No, no, no. But I got to tell you, it looks bad for Kamala Harris. And I wonder if they've already resigned themselves to defeat, especially with that debate performance last night. J.D. Vance, man, Donald Trump is a lucky guy. He picked a good one right there. J.D. Vance is the future of, of, of MAGA, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm seeing optimism across the board, and I don't know how Democrats pull out of this tailspin. Reignite inflation? We've got inflation. What they say is, no, inflation's fine. Yes, but inflation compared with, real, with inflation-adjusted wage growth, people are losing money. And this is a disaster across the board. It's hard for, for us. <coughs> Excuse me. I run a business. We run several, several, and I can see it. Don't you come to me and tell me the economy is good when we're looking at this. 
you know, one of the things we've run into, run into quite a bit, because we always say become a member at TimCast.com, right? Now, our memberships have been up for a couple of years. They've always been 10 bucks. I know like Daily Wire charge a little bit more. And we've talked about it. Prices are going up. Costs are going up. We need to be able to pay more. We've we, like affording the resources we need. It is tough because as we, we stay the same, it's either we need to add 10,000 new members because volume is going to help us get through it. Or we got to raise prices. But the problem is we raise prices, we lose members. And then we're just making nothing. What we need is a better economy where people are have disposable income, they're living comfortably, and they say, I can spare 10 bucks for Timcast. I think they do good work. Instead, what we're finding is people saying, I love you guys, but we're just struggling right now. Well, we can't charge more to people who are struggling right now. How are we supposed to run a business where we host these shows and pay a staff with the inflation as bad as it is? Because they're lying to us. Man, I hope Trump wins because I'm just hoping that we see the ad sales start going back up. Everything starts improving. Now, don't get, get me wrong. We're not we're not struggling over here. We, we do well. We do. But my point is this. I can see the inflation impacting every area of, area of our business, and it's making us have to tighten our belts because we want to make sure we're prepared, prepared for the worst. But the regular American people living paycheck to paycheck are struggling through this. Democrats are in trouble on this one, my friends. It has been a bad, bad past week. It's been a bad yesterday. We'll see how it plays out. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button and subscribe to this channel? Share the show because uh, sharing these videos is the most powerful thing that you can do. Word of mouth is how shows grow. But I got to tell you, normally with the amount of views we get and super chats and likes, we, we hit some of the highest numbers live. We had 35, 36,000 people watching live today. You'd think YouTube would prop us up in the algorithm and say, hey, this show's really good. But they don't. They bury us. And they make sure that when you try and search for me, you only get people who are lying about me who hate my guts. It's the most disgusting thing. It's despicable. But they're hoping that the pressure will shut me down. But I'm not going to get shut down. I refuse to accept that. But I need your help. Share the show. Become a member at TimCast.com. And pick up the song Coming Home on iTunes by TimCast. I appreciate it, you guys. We'll be back at 8 p.m. at YouTube.com slash TimCastIRL. Thank you all so much for hanging out. We'll see you all then.